Well, folks, I'm out here packing up for this trip. I'll leave a link to all the prep work that I did for this day so that you can get a look at what I did to prepare from everything from the gear to the locations, the weather forecast, the safety plan, all of that. I'm looking at the water right now, though, and uh, <laughs> it's pretty hard out back in my house. You'll see the areas I choose and why I've chosen them when we get there. But for now, let's get this car loaded up and get on the road. we're on the road it's about nine o'clock now there's no real need to get out that early this time of year especially with how much the water is frozen i'm driving over the patapsco right now and aside from the main channel all the water is hard out here so i'm not in a huge rush to get out there i need that water to loosen up but in terms of my game plan today because of how hard the water is i am aiming for several different spillways that i know of on the eastern shore because i know it's moving water Hopefully that water right there should be open. And hopefully there's gonna be some yellow perch, maybe even some pickerel doing their run up, doing their thing up in there. Now the pickerel usually don't spawn this early. It's usually not till a little bit later in the year, but I'm sure gonna give it a shot. So I will check back in with you once I arrive to location number one. Well, folks have arrived at my first location, and as I feared, spillway fishing is going to be the name of the game. The open water, the only open water that exists is straight below the spillway. So if the fish aren't here, we're gonna be leaving pretty quick to go to our second location. And hopefully there we can find some open water, but I kinda doubt it. Let's get things started. Now, a few quick tips here. One thing I'm gonna have on hand is a towel to dry off my hands. A dip net to minimize how wet my hands get from getting the minnows out. And then gloves to put on for after I finish baiting up each line. Let's get to the fishing. So I'm on the other side of the bridge now, and I've done really well for pickerel here in the past. But granted, I think that was a little bit later in the year, under warmer conditions. So I'm gonna drift it down through this channel. I'm gonna, I already have one minnow soaking right now to drift through. I'm gonna get my jigging rod out, so I can try that as well. And then I might throw a little chatterbait swim bait mix that I have rigged up. After that, if I don't get anything, I'll be out of here and on to the next location. Folks, we got our first fish on. He hit it right here next to shore. Now he might cut me off. It's a small pickerel. Caught him on a shad dart tipped with a minnow. This is honestly my perch rig. I was not planning on catching a pickerel on this one. I should have known better though. Any kind of minnow they're gonna go after. Come here, little fella. Oh yeah, it's deep in his throat. I'll probably have to retie this. Oh no, I do have in the corner of the mouth. I lucked out there. There we go. We're not going to get skunk today, folks. <laughs> so I was definitely wondering. This time of year, I mean, skunks are not uncommon at all. You're, you're lucky to hook a fish this time of year. Come on, phone. I just want to get a picture of him before he wriggles out of my hand. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, yeah, I'll let you keep that, buddy. That's about a 10-inch fish. Oh, hey, hey, I'm gonna get you back in. He's healthy, though. He's got some good, good weight to him. There you go. He, he held on to that minnow, too. <laughs> he wasn't letting that go. Now, here's the rig I have, and really, like I said, this is for my perch fishing more than anything else. You can see I have the beadhead nymph up top. That's like, I can actually be a really, uh-oh. My float's doing something funny. Uh, I was gonna say that it might be current, but I don't think so. I think that's a fish. Fish on. Yep. Feels better than the last one, too. 
Not big, but better than the last one. We got two fish. <laughs> a little better. A little better fish. Like I said before, I've done well here for pickerel in the past. There you go. See, that was a slow take. A lot of times pickerel will hit it on the run with a lunge. So it ends up dropping really quickly. But in that case, <laughs> it was not. <laughs> All right. Now that was on the circle hook. And a great tip that I picked up from 410 Commando is that knotless snell for your circle hooks. It really helps with your hookup ratio. But there's that little guy. <laughs> He's smaller than I thought. But again, nice thickness to him. All right, he landed in the water. <laughs> Let's get this back out there. Uh, to round out the rest of this rig, I am running straight braid. I wasn't planning on using it today because usually this time of year, using straight braid is not a good idea because it retains water. So if your guides are freezing in cold weather, it's not good to use braid. I have the braid tied off to that's 10 pound fluoro using an FG knot. That's the best knot I've found for connecting fluoro to braid. And then down to a one alt circle hook. Let's get this thing rebated back out there and hopefully catch that thing's grandmother. Back to my other rig. <laughs> there on the dropper loop is a beat head nymph down to a small shad dart, maybe a 1 16th or so that I'm tipping with minnow. And that's why that last pickerel hit and I'm checking the line right above the hook to make sure there's no frays, and I don't see any. So I actually don't think there's a need to retie this. And on this rod is six pound fluoro. All right, folks, we're on the board with two fish. <laughs> that makes me smile. It's been about a month since I've been fishing, so any fish at all, especially this time of year, is a blessing. Let's get back to it. Fish on. I think it's another pick. Yep, another pick. Again on that shad dart. Man, I, I'm really tearing these pickerel up on the shad dart. I think they really like that jigging action. I really think they like that jigging action. And I'm getting them off this bridge right here, right behind these pilings. Although the first one hit a little bit closer in the shore around these rocks. But this is definitely the biggest so far. I'll measure it just for reference, but I'm going to guess and say maybe... 14 inches, pushing 15. Certainly not an upgrade for me for the tournament, but gosh darn it. They are giving me some action. Oh, I left my measuring board in the car. That's all right. I'm gonna revise that down and say 13, maybe pushing 14. But like I've said, any fish this time of year is a gift. All right, little bud, here you go. Go ahead. There you go. All right, again, since it was a pickerel, even though I got him in the corner of the mouth, I'm gonna check this line right above the knot. And it still looks abrasion free. So I think we're good to keep fishing with it. Of the two species between pickerel and perch, I definitely expect the pickerel to be the more abundant and the yellow perch to be the more elusive of the two today. So I mean, yellow perch fishing is all about timing. It's all about timing. They're either there on that stage of the spawn and you're on them or they're not so we'll see how that goes oh shit. what a shit cast i doubt i can get this back but if i go upstream i might have a shot at it oh the bow and arrow trick worked <laughs> nice can't believe it worked we may have found a candidate for a cleanup on the eastern shore. If you're not familiar with the cleanup meetups, as part of the Legion of Anglers, one thing we do is we go around to areas in the Delmarva area to help try to clean them up. Things like fishing line can be a death sentence for a lot of animals out here. And you can see along here, cans, bottles, all the kinds of crap people leave around. So this place might be a good candidate for a meetup cleanup. Well, folks, the first location wasn't too bad to me. You know, pulling thief pickerel this time of year, I'll take it. I will definitely take it. Now I'm on my way to my second location. ETA from where I was to here is about 40 minutes. 
I've been on the road for about another 10, so I'm probably about 30, 33 minutes out or so. Once I get there, I'll check back in with you, and hopefully, we'll pull some bigger ones and other species over there. All right, folks, we have arrived at location number two, and it's the same state of affairs that I had anticipated for the first one. That being that there is no open water on this lake to fish, which is why I'm gonna hit the spillway. I'll get back with you once I'm down. Jesus. Oh. Almost went down on that one. Whew. Now this tree right here being down is new. And I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be great structure for fish. No doubt about that. But I can just see myself already losing multiple rigs in that darn thing. Oh no, I didn't have it recording? Oh, well, folks, I think I may have missed the crappie that I just caught. So I thought I had it recording and I did not. So I'll just put the picture up for you. <laughs> but I just caught one crappy, and I'm hoping that I found a school of them and it'll be some solid action. Time will tell. I think I got him, folks. I think I got him. Even though that hook set was trash. Look at that bluegill. That's a big bluegill, man. <laughs> well, you heard me talking before about how I catch big bluegill out of here, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's real close to a hand-sized bluegill right there. I mean, that, that is a hand-sized bluegill. And my hands ain't exactly small. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, come here, you little son of a gun, you. Jeez, Louise. You are a flippy floppy guy. Yeah, I know this can't feel good, buddy. I'm sorry about that, but I want to get the hook out of you. There we go. So one more quick look at her. Nice bluey gill. Get out of here. There he goes. I think he'll be all right. I hope so. Certainly don't want to kill any fish that I'm not going to use. I'm actually going to take this and put it farther back this time. Drift a different portion. See what happens. There he is. Fish on. Oh, get out of there. Get out of there. Yeah, sometimes you let, let the fish work themselves out. That crappie's a little bigger than the last one. And I caught this one on camera. <laughs> now, I've never caught any really big crappie here. I think the biggest one I caught is probably around 12 inches or so. But I have caught good numbers here before. And they are a really fun fish when you get into a school of them. They just are. I couldn't ask for better conditions today. I really could not. I mean, there is no wind, hardly at all. Maybe like three mile an hour or so. That's about it. And Flippy. Flippy, I say. All right, little cutie. Thank you, thank you. Ah, I keep broadsiding them. I don't like doing that. <laughs> it can't feel good for them. And it's a good thing that when I went to Chesapeake Outdoor Sports this morning, that I went ahead and got half a pint of smalls and half a pint of large. Large, obviously, for the pickerel, although sometimes I do catch crappie and perch on them. And the smalls for the crappie and perch. And it's really paid off because it's been almost exclusively, you know, I think it has been exclusively the micro minis that I've been catching uh, my fish on today. With the exception of the pickerel at my first location over at Tuckahoe. Other than that, haven't had any action on the bigger minnows. It seems to be crucial that I apply some action to this, which isn't that surprising, but it is easier when they just take a minnow under a float that's just sitting there. <laughs> and part of that's probably attributable to just how cold this water is on the part of the minnows, because I've had a few minnows today seemingly die as soon as they hit the water. Like that's how cold that water shock is for them. It literally kills them. So what I'm doing, so I'm giving it some very light twitches. Sometimes I just move the line. I don't even move the actual bobber. I just twitch the line. 
and that's been enough to trigger that bite. I'm gonna try something with my minnow under the float. And granted, this hook might actually be a little bit big. Like I said, it's a one aught I have it on here for pickerel, not all these other species. But what I'm gonna do is take one of the smaller minnows and put it on there and see if that makes all the difference in terms of these fish taking a minnow that is not being moved by me. And so let's see if that size makes all the difference. Or if in fact, it's the movement that's the key. The minnow under the float's looking very nervous. Very nervous. Oh, there he goes. What did I say? It's all about that minnow size. Oh, I saw him. I saw that crappy. I saw him. He had the minnow, but not the hook. So, two proofs of concept. <laughs> One, that minnow size is making all the difference for getting those crappy to bite. And two, this hook may indeed be a little bit too big. <laughs> There it goes, float down. Got him, fish on. Another crappy. Oh, that's the biggest one yet, I think. Oh, get out of that line, get out of that line. Yeah, that's the biggest one by far. That's a nice crappy. That's a straight up quality fish right there. Yeah, she'll go 11 and a half, 12 inches. That's better, that's a better fish. And I'm telling you. Those micro minis are key. Absolutely key. Thanks, buddy. Whew. There he goes. I'm gonna go ahead and reposition this one because I've had my best luck, it seems. A little bit farther upstream and a little bit farther to the far side. Yeah, that'll be a good drift. All right, come here, you. There we go. Oh, there it goes. What did I say? What did I say? Go oh! That's right where they are. I'm dialed in on them as far as location goes. Got him. What did I say? What did I say? Uh, uh, uh. Nah, no shore structure for you, buddy. No shore structure for you, buddy. Oh, I love finding crappy. You always find more. <laughs> Looks like you might have got bit at some point, maybe by a turtle or a pickerel. Well, folks, I'm two for two in terms of location so far and catching fish. I haven't struck out at any of these locations yet, so that's pretty awesome for wintertime fishing. I'm definitely digging that. Bite the here, though, although it's been good for the crappy, seems to have died. But what I'm gonna do is pack things up get over to my car and get to the third location for today. So folks, we're doing all right so far. The fish count is not bad. They even got one quality crappie out of there. Not a huge one, don't get me wrong, but not a small one either. I'm on my way to my third location for the day, hopefully to pick up some big fish. It'd be awesome if we had some open water over there to launch the kayak, but I really, really doubt it. I just sent my wife my update to let her know that I'm changing locations yet again, just in the interest of safety since it's winter fishing out here. But I will check back in with you when we arrive to our third location. Rose, can you see that? Can you see that giant flock of my hat to a supermarket? That's snow beans. Folks, that was close. <laughs> I have arrived to my third and what is likely to be my final location due to, due to the limits of time. During the season with very short daylight hours. We'll see how it goes here. I don't have really high hopes. I think it's still too early in the season for the pickerel to be running heavily here. Same thing with the yellow perch, unfortunately, but we'll see. I'm gonna do my best and we'll see what happens. It's a shame this place hasn't been stocked with trout yet because I usually do really well here for trout and that would definitely knock out 
catching fish in all the locations. Now I had hoped the main lake up there would be just open enough for me to fish it or launch my kayak. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Oh man, it's just, it's just a bluegill, but now I've caught a fish at every location. <laughs> yup, there he is. Yeah. All right, bro. All right, later. I was talking to Rashawn, and a bluegill smacked my small minnow. And now I've caught a fish at each location. <laughs> oh, man. All right, folks. I am obviously doing something pretty crazy here. It doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> but I got to my third location. The lake was a little more open, but only slightly more open than the other two that I've been to. So there wasn't enough open water for me to fish there for the pickerel that I was hoping to fish for. It is what it is. I fished the spillway. No pickerel there, which is really surprising because I almost always pin a couple there. But I did catch a bluegill there, so technically I kind of caught a fish at every single location I've been to so far today, if you count bluegill. <laughs> but anyway, I had a fourth location in my back pocket just in case today because I really wanted to catch some yellow perch too. I'm on the way there right now. It's about an hour away. I should get there around 4.15. Sunset is at 5.30, which gives me about, at most, 45 minutes to an hour to fish. If I can get my kayak and everything set up and launched quickly enough to get out there. It's going to be a really close call. If I hit any traffic, I'm done. Either way, it's been a great day. Catching any fish this time of year is a blast. But I haven't given up hope yet. I'm on the way right now. I will check in with you. Once I get to that last location, I'm on the way. So you heard that right, folks. After this day that I've had so far, I had a blast out there. I decided to make one last run with very little time left on the clock to see if I can get some yellow perch. So make sure you stay tuned for that next episode so you catch that fishing action. And make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know any questions you may have. And have a good one.